God is good, and with each day that passes, brings us a day closer to the launch of Camelot Unchained. Today, guys, I want to talk a little bit about the depths. I mentioned it back in my, one of my videos earlier, and I said I was going to touch on it, but I really wanted there to be enough information to really make a really good, fully fleshed video, and I think there's enough information now to start talking about it. So what is the depths? Basically, this is an RVR and also a PBE dungeon, so if you play Dark Age of Camelot like I did, of course you're going to be thinking of Darkness Falls. And everybody who played Dark Age of Camelot loved it. A place where the rounds went to, well in Darkness Falls you fought to get access to it. However, if you had access before and you're already in it, then it didn't necessarily kick you out. So you would already be in there, so when the new realm would come rolling in because they had access to it now, you could still be in there, and if you're really smart, you could take out a couple of them, and uh, it was a lot of fun, because there was people come there for the PvE, but there was also, of course, because it's contested, I guess it would be the best way to say, there's a lot of RBR going there too. But that was how Darkness Falls works. Let's dive deep into the depths and see the differences. So, first of all, it, the depths is a place that's gotten inspiration from horror movies okay they're going for a very dark scary foreboding evil place you know filled with dark magic and intense monsters and more about those monsters here in a minute and to also be a huge gargantuan dungeon one that will take you a long time for you to get comfortable with and learn it and when i mean learn it i mean the systems because it's constantly changing of course, the dungeon's going to come with plenty of lore and legends and, of course, treasures because they need you to want to go there, okay? So they're going to try to attract all three realms into going there to not only make it an active, fun dungeon with a lot of public, non-instanced fun, but also to attract RBR into this dungeon. Now, they've also spoke a lot about an interesting feature where when you die, you become one of the terrifying monsters in the depths. Because when they say that the game is PvP focused, they really mean it, guys, for real. They also mention it as a traveling, so moving around dungeon. Also, it shapeshifts and it's filled with darkness. So you definitely have to have your own type of light to be able to see. So the association of the depths does change and shift with the three realms, each one of those being able to control or conquer it. And they want this to be sort of like an end game type thing. You know what I mean? Because Camelot Unchained doesn't technically have an end game, right? It's not about just leveling up. It's more of a game where it's all about the PvP, all about the RBR, all about realm pride and going against the other ones. And they want this to be something very key to what you want to do. You know what I mean? If you want to progress and you want to get that feeling PvE and you want that dungeon kind of thing, then they want this to be the place where everybody goes. Because the depths is alive, it's not just a place, you know, this it's a living phantom type place that changes literally. Um, they wanted that to be the goal of the game is to kind of conquer it. Now, how would you conquer it? Well, that's connected with the state of war going on in the outer world so that that's how its entrance is constantly moving. Now, once, once it does move and this shift happens, the depths opens its gates to another round while closing itself for the previous one cutting off the reinforcements. So, yeah, if you're already there, you're still there, but reinforcements can't get to you now because the entrance has moved now. And then the fight begins, just very similar to Darkness Falls, except for a little bit more advanced. This is literally the evolution of Darkness Falls, is the way I look at it. And of course, trying for your particular round to absolutely dominate the warfare going on out in the world, so that you can have access and exploit the treasure and everything in the depths, is hard. You know, it's difficult because that means you have to be winning the war, basically. And then you have access to this place. And so do your realm mates. And so it's kind of like another goal to make you want to win, to make you want your realm to get ahead so you get access. Not just you, but your entire realm now gets this gift of getting access to the depths. As I said before, it's supposed to be very large. A huge changing, adapting to each realm that controls it. 
and even changing its mood and level of hostility depending on the player's actions and of course hiding the best and the richest resources and treasures and legendary items for crafters that they would need to make this awesome equipment just literally everything cool here so that people are attracted here so that the pvp can begin so let's talk a little bit because i've touched on it let's talk a little bit about when your realm loses control of the deaths so the player or his whole party could choose they have the option to sacrifice their lives at these places called the points of power which makes them become all kinds of different monsters to harass the controlling realm so you could troll them you could you know actually try to take a bunch of them down they want it to be a very multifaceted kind of experience and make there be a little bit of that pvm you know player versus monster where you're actually the monsters got some control you know it's it's a real it's a real player in the depth sometimes now of course on that note they don't want it to just be the rbr just be the pvp they want it to be challenging on its own as well just getting through this with the pve being difficult but keep in mind that the pvp mixes with the pve sometimes and some of these things i'm talking about so it's it's a constant back and forth but anyway some of the things that you will encounter sometimes pve sometimes technically pvp we'll get to that in a minute everything from deadly traps that you're that the other realm could have left behind for example you might have to get builders to build a bridge you know actual people actual players that have leveled up the, their building skill to build bridges so you can cross dark abysses and get deeper into the depths labyrinths and keep in mind once again that the the actual physicality of this place changes over time and of course if you realize that for example that your realm is you know beginning to lose the war it's not looking good you can start building defenses and traps for the incoming realm and they're even going to have the option where you can leave these kind of orbs behind so that you can literally watch so even after you leave because you died or because you came monster or whatever and you're out of it you're not in there anymore you can watch through these orbs and watch your enemy realm fall for these traps that you've set up for them and you can actually watch that happen. Some examples they give are like getting burned alive, having rocks fall on top of their heads, having spikes come out and impale them. Just basically having some fun watching your enemy realm get murdered by the traps that you and your friends left behind. Hey, it's just good old fashioned PvP fun. And of course, raid boss type, or boss types maybe I should say, named NPCs guarding access to certain areas that yield lots of good stuff treasure crafting materials and things like that really rare things and i think you get a pretty good picture of what the depths is now once again for people who play dark age of camelot some of this sounds familiar you know fighting out in the world and you get a prize for dominating which would have been darkness falls now would be the depths getting to go down in there this is a place where in dark age of camelot where the drops are better they're not really doing drops per se in in camelot unchained so far but good things and treasure and stuff like that so same concept except for they've added a lot of new features such as it changes because you could kind of learn darkness falls you know the way it worked in darkness falls it was one dungeon that it just was like the, you couldn't go in it it wouldn't allow you to go in it unless your realm had ability but in different spots in each round there would be a place that was called darkness falls i know in albion it was right there very close i mean not far within the same zone as the entrance to camelot the main city so it you know there was a a, a low b dungeon most people's first dungeon right there nearby so it was in a low level spot so you knew it you you already had recognized it early in the game while you were leveling up you'd seen it maybe if you were unlucky had tried to go up to it and got murdered because it's some high level stuff there but in any case it, it was something you recognized very early and of course you would ask people what is that and it's always oh, starting to fall something really really cool place it was hyped up within the game and it was a place you wanted to go it was a place you were excited about that you heard there was pvp and you had to earn it and it had the best treasure the best loot the best gold drops the coolest looking mobs you know and so it built up this prestige and you really were excited about getting to go there so it make it gives you another incentive to go out in the world in the open world and outer world as they're calling it and fight in pvp fight in the rbr get some prestige help your realm mates out and unlock this awesome dungeon 
that now has even more options. You know, being able to turn into a monster to, to have these, I'm assuming, new abilities that you'll be able to attack the other realms, laying out traps, getting to watch the traps unfold, and just, it, that sounds like a lot of fun, guys. Really cool idea. I like that they've taken the Darkness Falls idea and they've taken it further. That's what MMORPGs are all about. I'm glad to hear that they're not just copy-paste and dark, Dark Age of Camelot, and then simply adding a couple of fluffy details and then calling it a day. Because that probably would work okay. You know, just updating the graphics to the actual Dark Age of Camelot would have worked great, in my opinion. It's my opinion. But what Mark Jacobs is doing here instead is he's building a brand new game with its own lore, with its own kind of feel, and he's taking things he's learned in the past, he's trying to make them better, and I applaud him for that. Now, hopefully he can pull it off. I know a lot of people are super upset that the game's still in beta, but the deal is, is this game's in a very unique situation compared to a lot of other MMORPGs because they built the engine themselves in-house so they can do these kind of PvP things, so they can try to keep the lag down, keep the frames up, and make everybody happy. And, you know, it's difficult. There's, they're a smaller team, and I know they've made a lot of money in the Kickstarter, etc. I get it, but guys, it's still a smaller team, and they're trying to do something pretty crazy. Something that I would argue has never been done before, and I applaud them for it, and hopefully they can pull it off, and I wish them the best. And I think they got great intentions and really great ideas. And I hope to see it come to fruition in a beautiful way. Because there would be nothing cooler than a, a PvP-focused game. Not as an afterthought, but an actual PvP-focused game. Where even the dungeon, this big labyrinth, the depths, is still really focused, completely saturated in PvP. And I think that's excellent. Guys, thanks for joining me today. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I don't make a ton of Camelot Unchained videos, but when I feel like there's enough information for me to really go out there and talk a lot about it, I definitely do that. And of course, I cover a lot of other MMORPGs, Pantheon Rise of the Fallen for your PvE fix, for your ultimate PvE fix, and lots of other games. So join me, subscribe, and of course, guys, check out the t-shirt. I'll have linked up above in the little, the little info card here and also in the description down below because I did make a PvP shirt just for you guys and i hope you enjoy it and thanks for joining me today and until next time god bless and happy gaming please listen to what i say i've been making videos all day my friends all say I'm it's a video buffet you can even hit replay but please just subscribe I can't even describe Being part of my tribe I'll even offer you a prize But just please just subscribe And hit the bell notification too